Hello and welcome to NewsClicks International Roundup. Today we are going to be talking about the U.S. administration's decision to sanction the International Criminal Court and its officials following the ICC's decision to conduct an investigation into U.S. war crimes in Afghanistan. Now, the U.S. decision was taken on Thursday. It has been widely condemned by the international community. And to talk more about this, we have with us Prabir Prakash. So, Prabir, thank you so much for joining us. So, we, uh, we do know that this issue has been going on for a while. In fact, uh, we are looking at war crimes that took place from 2003, and it's a very, fairly long period. And the ICC did look into the issue last year. They initially said that they would not, they, were, they did not give a go ahead for a prosecution. Uh, this year, in March, they did. And uh, so the US has been building up this campaign against the ICC for quite some time. But uh, this is also part of a larger issue, considering that the US never joined this court and was always, has always questioned its legitimacy. Well, as far as joining the court is concerned, neither is Russia, China, or India. So this is, he's, the U.S. is not alone in that. And of course, Israel. But you know, the bigger issue is that this threat against international organizations actually has been there for quite some time. If you remember, John Bolton actually attracted in the ICC, uh, International Criminal Court, precisely on this ground about three years back. Right. And the threat was that they will sanction the individuals involved in the investigations. And therefore, not only they, but even their families could suffer. Right. So this is one track that they have been using, that we are not going to only fight the institution concern, but we are also going to make, in some sense, uh, examples of the key officials. So that you suffer for the rest of your life. Now, and not only you, but your family. And Bolton, if you remember, had actually on the OPCW, the organization looks after uh, chemical weapons, the chemical weapons treaty. treaty. And that, uh, I think it was Jose Bustani, who was the head of that, who was a Brazilian. He not only was threatened, but Bolton went so far, far further than that. He went, in fact, far enough to say, your children study the United States. So it was an implicit threat against his sons. Now, this is the kind of politics that the United States has been playing, sometimes openly, but certainly behind the veil, so to say. And this has now become far more clear on the issue of the sanctions against the ICC. Uh, ben Suda, the chief prosecutor of uh, International Criminal Court, and also her associates who are investigating this case. But it is also not only the United States and the Afghanistan case. It's also the Israel's case. Israel has been also under investigations. I think it was announced in December last year. And this has been building up. And the US threats against the International Criminal Court predate. In fact, it's opening investigations against Americans on the issue of Afghanistan, of the Afghanistan uh, essentially atrocities. And they said they will investigate both the Taliban the Afghan government and the United States, all three of them. So you can see clearly what the US is sending is a message that all international organizations have to accept US exceptionalism, which of course was there by, uh, by default. And therefore, if you don't accept that as a default state, then of course we're going to come and use all the instruments that we can against you. And it's not only the organizations, but it is also the individuals. You can see also the Huawei case, which of course is a very different case, but you can see the target was not just Huawei, but also the daughter of the largest shareholder in Huawei. And when she was traveling on business and she was the chief financial officer, the CFO, and she was arrested in Canada for violating the domestic laws of the United States. So the effective message that is being now uh, passed, and we had the earlier also the Noriega, Noriega case, the U.S. law runs all over the world, but international law that does not run in United States. This is the broad position that the U.S. has. It is not sanctified, shall we say, by the sanctions they're imposing on the people involved. And of course, the International Criminal Court was really trying to uh, rectify one glaring issue that has always plagued it, that it went after African states leaders but it never went beyond that. It really, except uh, the Serbian case, it really did not go beyond that. And therefore, this had been held that it was essentially a pawn in the hands of powerful Western powers. And that is what it was trying to get out of 
that no, it can look at the, the, the issues of atrocities, international uh, human rights violations in places like Palestine and Afghanistan. And of course, that it does bring up the basic issue that is there in the world. Does the US writ run all over the world? Or is it that it is bound by international law and international treaties? And the US position is that it doesn't. And that's what comes out more brutally, shall we say, with a Bolton and a Trump than it does with more soft-spoken uh, persons earlier, whether it be Barack Obama or it be Clinton. So when the Republicans of a certain, Republicans of a certain stripe come into uh, the administration, it becomes more open. George Bush, of course, was, as you know, the architect of various wars, but leaving that out, he also had Bolton. And it was under his presidentship that Bolton had threatened the OPCW uh, head, Joseph Bustani. So, you know, those are the kind of things which you normally associate with international thuggery. You don't associate with civil, shall we say, administrations which claim to be the global leaders. But what we are seeing is really that. And that is coming out in the absolutely, shall we say, uh, without any veil in very naked form. And uh, to sort of take the aspect, the international aspect a bit further. So we have already talked about earlier how the U.S. has continuously been withdrawing from uh, treaties related to disarmament and arms control. We also have a situation where an international body like the U.N. is increasingly, or has been left almost toothless in the sense that although it has been passing resolutions against the blockade on Cuba for years, they have basically had no effect. So how do we, and we also talked about this earlier, but how do we see the idea of global governance itself at a time like this, which also gains extra importance during the time of a pandemic? The WHO, again, is an organization which is hitherto so respected, but again, the U.S. has completely withdrawn from it and is leading a campaign against it. Well, I think you can see that there are three major fronts on which U.S. at the moment is launching attacks on international organizations. I'm not talking about the treaties, which you mentioned earlier. The three organizations right now on its radar, the crosshairs, is essentially international court, criminal court. It's not the international court of justice, which the US is a party to. International criminal court, it wasn't ever a party to. It's basically the IC, international criminal court, the World Trade Organization, because it, they, it, it dares to also listen to complaints against the United States. So the US says, as far as I am concerned, I am ruled by own, my own laws. You have to be ruled by my laws and international treaties is what it wants every other country to follow. So that was the World Trade Organization. We have seen the trade uh, organization virtually led, rendered toothless because the tribunal, which is finally the body which allows the treaty to be implemented by passing judgments, whether some what A has done is right or B has done is right. That part of it has been completely rendered toothless because US has not accepted any new nominations in the, uh, in the tribunal. So there is, I think, only one member left at the tribunal level and they need at least three to meet and pass a judgment. So at the moment, WTO's dispute the solving mechanism, resolving mechanism has been rendered completely toothless. The third, of course, is in the pandemic we have seen, the WHO, because in spite of every warning that had been given, the US decided it didn't have to listen to it. It decided that it knew much better. It tried its own test kits, not the WHO test, WHO test kits, and it failed miserably to stop the epidemic from entering the United States. And having entered its huge spread that has taken place, the US still is the largest number, it is still the largest number of infected. It's followed by Brazil. And at the moment looks like the fourth highest is India, Russia is the third highest. But in terms of daily infections, India is also the third highest. So you have United States, Brazil and India showing the largest number of infections per day and also the largest number of deaths per day at the moment. So given all of this, WHO would have been a central organization around which people could have coordinated their policies because you cannot fight a pandemic as an individual country. 
you have to fight it globally now that means fight it globally with knowledge sharing knowledge of uh, not only knowledge but also equipment medicines vaccines that's how you fight the epidemic because you can't stamp the epidemic out at the global level then of course the epidemic continues in one part of the globe or the other and of course it will spread to other countries again so given that this is the case where it is not the countries that are involved in terms of against each other it's not a zero sum game i lose you lose it's not the if i lose you win so the pandemic the us and them is the virus versus uh, us so in that condition a global collective action coordination is something that who was obviously the right platform to do it under and of course the united states decided that they needed the scapegoat so china was scapegoat number 1 and the scapegoat scapegoat number 2 was who mainly because china is able to control its epidemic therefore show up the us in a very bad light so therefore it also needed further scapegoats what it calls accessories and therefore the who has become the shall we say the sacrificial goat right. in its battle trump's battle to win his second term absolutely Thank you so much for being for talking to us. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching News Click.